I first came across Ricky Gervais in the late 90s on the 11 o'clock show, where he played an obnoxious, politically incorrect character in several skits. In 1955, Rosa Parks, a black American, was arrested for refusing to give up her seat on a bus. This event is thought by many to be the catalyst that sparked the civil rights movement. Black people were still discriminated against in all walks of life, and it seemed that in some countries, particularly South Africa, things would never change. Then, in 1982, two men, Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder, sang Ebony and Ivory, in which they expounded that if black and white can live together on the piano keyboard, I don't know why they sang piano, but the point they were making was that if different types of wood can be put next to each other, then racism is wrong. Did the trick. Now, there's no more racism anywhere, ever. Power a song. Michael Jackson, it doesn't matter if you're black or white. I mean, he chose to be white, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not easy being green. Kermit's nephew, Robin, off the Muppets. He didn't know what he was talking about. I haven't thought this through. Sorry. These weren't particularly well received, and it didn't last very long. But looking back, you can see he was onto something. He was using the classic comedy formula of portraying a character who isn't as smart as he thinks he is, but nevertheless is still very opinionated. If we compare this with other rude and opinionated characters, such as Faulty Towers, Larry David, or Blackadder, we accept their behavior because we see they are trapped in life. They have weakness and vulnerabilities, and very rarely succeed. So, going back to the Ricky Gervais character on the 11 o'clock show, he was missing this extra layer. We didn't know anything about the world around him. There was no backstory. So what did Ricky Gervais the writer do? He took this character and dropped him into the real world. We all know about The Office. The super successful comedy from the early 2000s that is still ripped off to this very day. It was the breakthrough Gervais was looking for, as he had now created David Brent, a character that still captured the cringe-inducing sense of humor as before, but now we saw someone that was also trapped and alone. Having a laugh? Oh, yeah? Yeah, but you can have a laugh in the public lunch time. <laughs> Selfish. That's a bit dangerous, isn't it, in an office? If you want to want to work, maybe you should work, as it's quarter past two. Yeah, all right, we're just finishing off. Now. Yeah, we're just finishing off. Just want to be popular as the new boss. Oh, love me. Pathetic. We could see that his attempts at humor were a desperate need for attention, not just someone acting smug and getting away with it. The office infused elements of Spinal Tap, Larry Sanders, and Curb Your Enthusiasm. And this is really what separated Gervais from the rest of the pack. Because he blurred the lines of fiction and reality, not only in the writing, but in the execution. We're never quite sure if we're watching a comedy or a tragedy. And this would become his signature style. With his next sitcom, Extras, he played wannabe actor Andy Millman. And much like David Brent in The Office, we again see consistent themes of existentialism. How desperate people end up doing desperate things. Oh, she's moving into my block. I spoke to her earlier. I think it's a bit of a vibe, right? I'm going to go and talk to her. You come over, okay? Just ask for an autograph. Mm. Yeah, and just say something like, oh, I think you're the most amazing actor on TV. You're already using your new polish for evil. you got to use what you can. Fair enough. Excuse me, you Andy Hello. Millman? Yeah. Star of the new sitcom When the Whistle Blows? Yeah. Get your autograph, please. No worries. Who is it to? Me. Yeah, but I don't know your name, do I? <laughs> Maggie. Maggie. Can I just say that I think you're the most amazing comedy actor on television? Oh, not amazing. But that's what you told me to say. Come on. To the outside observer, this is comedy, but for the person living it, it's a tragedy. You can definitely tell Ricky Gervais was a philosophy student. But the success of these shows wasn't just about his ability to write a sitcom, it also introduced us to what type of comedian he is. There were only two seasons of The Office and only two seasons of Extras. So he clearly isn't self-indulgent, someone who wanted to milk as much out of a good thing as he could. He wanted to preserve and move on to the next thing. To test himself as a writer and a performer. By now he had made a name for himself in Hollywood, so naturally that would be his next target.
Ricky Gervais went on to be a successful podcaster, stand-up comedian, and writer of shows where he doesn't play the lead role, such as Life's Too Short and An Idiot Abroad. But it's hosting the Golden Globes that really shot him into the A-list. His first hosting gig was in 2010, and by this time, he'd already become a polished live performer on the stand-up circuit. The fact that he went from TV star to stand-up star is very unusual, as it's normally the other way around. Hello, hello and welcome to the 67th Annual Golden Globe Awards, live from Los Angeles. I'm Ricky Gervais. Um, thank you. You, uh, you probably know me as the creator of The Office. <laughs> no, you don't, do you? You think Steve Carell did it all? Oh, he's brilliant, isn't he, Steve Carell? <laughs> he's amazing as the bumbling office manager. Where does he get his ideas from? Traditionally, award show hosts may do a tongue-in-cheek song and dance number, parody some of the movies, make a few self-deprecating jokes, and throw in a few good-natured jabs at the celebrities. But Ricky Gervais wasn't going to do any of this. If we observe his body of work leading up to this point, we already know his feelings about the fleeting and shallow nature of show business. And the fact that he has not fully immersed himself in the Hollywood lifestyle meant he was able to present the awards from the point of view as an outsider looking in. For any of you who don't know, the Golden Globes are just like the Oscars, but without all that esteem. <laughs> The Golden Globes are to the Oscars what Kim Kardashian is to Kate Middleton, basically. <laughs> what? Bit louder, bit trashier, bit drunker, and more easily bought. So we know Ricky Gervais isn't afraid of making fun of himself, as well as the rich and powerful. And he does all this with that infectious laugh of his. <laughs> as if reminding us, hey, don't take any of this too seriously. And the other thing he doesn't shy away from making fun of is religion. He is unashamedly an atheist, and he has been very smart about this, as he focuses on the concept of religion itself, rather than picking on individuals. This is atheism in a nutshell. You say, um, uh, there's a God. I say, can you prove that? You say no, I say I don't believe you then. Mm -hmm. So, um, you believe in one God, I assume? Uh, in three persons, but go ahead. Okay, so you believe, okay. Mm -hmm. So, but there, there are about 3,000 to choose from that have been, you know, people who believe in I've done time. some reading, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so basically, you believe in, you, you, you deny one less God than I do. You don't believe in 2,999 gods. And I don't believe in just one more. Right. Most comedians don't go anywhere near such subject matter. In many ways, Ricky Gervais is reminiscent of other well-known satirists, such as Lenny Bruce, George Carlin, and Bill Hicks, who would apply critical thinking as a means to a punchline. They maintained a level of integrity to their work, rather than aim to please a corporate sponsor. Think about it. When is the last time you saw Ricky Gervais appear in a commercial or endorse a product? I mean, other than this. Or get the box set, that's still available. So, um, just, just, just 12 episodes in a special. Quality, not quantity, that's what, that's what counts. I, uh, so, uh, go and get that. Um, as a comedian, the worst thing you can be is a one-trick pony, as your routine can become stale pretty quickly. But by immersing himself into all aspects of writing and performing, Ricky Gervais has climbed his way to the very top. Even with a show like Afterlife, he is exploring humor that can be found even in the darkest of subjects. It takes a brave kind of comedian that can do all this, and in my opinion, the bravest comedians are usually the best. Is there a way to do it? Ignore it all. Oh, Do yeah. your special, get paid, yeah. buy a house, yeah. ignore it all.